what's on the page. The way that you know which item was selected is to work with the select elements selected index property. So we're going to define a new variable. We're going to comment out that alert statement and we're going to declare this variable by typing var cell index and then we're going to set it equal to the option list selected index property. So again it's my form, the input parameter, option list, the select element, dot selected index. And as you can expect I'm going to alert that value to the screen too. It might seem a little tedious but it more than makes up for for the effort and the fact that you know for sure it's your is valid. Now the number is 26. So if I choose 27 you would think that the message would show 27, but it doesn't. It shows 26. So that's very, very important. This is what's called a zero-based collection, meaning that the first item in the list might be numbered 1, but its position in the list is 0. And the second item in the list is numbered 2, but its position is 1. That's the kind of thing that could really cause some misery with a script if it isn't fully understood up front. So we now are retrieving our selected index. And what we can use that for is to retrieve the name value of the selected item. This next line of code is perhaps the trickiest one we're going to work with. And what I'm going to do is try to work through it gradually. So we are going to define a new variable called var cell name. And we're going to set the value of that variable equal to the, the current item or the selected index uh, which will choose the option that we're working with and then we'll retrieve the name property of that option. So the structure would be my form dot option list dot options which should look familiar. But then we're going to actually reference an index position in that list of options. We're going to use an open and close square bracket. So by now you might notice that we're making full use of the keyboard range in JavaScript. We have regular parentheses to receive parameters. We have curly braces to define an area where we can place our JavaScript code. And now we're also using square braces to set an index value or to choose which option we want. We know which option we want by now because we want the selected index. So we already have that variable defined. We're already capturing the selected index. Incidentally, I'll comment out the alert. So I'll just paste that variable name here inside the options. But we aren't doing anything yet. We're just mapping. This is like a street address. We're saying that we need my form and we need the option list select and we need the options collection and we need a certain index in the options collection. So we're drilling down or we're going more and more in a, uh, specific in terms of what we want. So now we can work with properties of that option since we've identified which one we want. And I'm going to type name. And I'll save the file. And I'll refresh the page. And I'll try this out. And in this case, nothing's happening that we see. If you've been paying attention, you might have noticed that I didn't add an alert statement, which is really necessary to show what we selected. So don't panic if you run into a problem with a script. Just retrace your steps. Go back to what worked before. You can always comment out a line of code if you're getting an error and piece by piece try to break it down. But it's really important to understand what's happening to even be able to do that sort of thing. So we refresh our page. And I choose an option. In this case it's saying undefined. So the name is undefined. So I'll go back to my script. So back in my script, if you remember, we received an undefined when I put name. So that must that tells me something's wrong here. It says that there's no name defined for that HTML. So if I would go back to my sources, uh, let's say like an internet source or a book, I would verify to myself that an option element definitely has a value property, which would retrieve if we had specified value equals one, it would retrieve that information. But when I go back to my sources, I find that name, in fact, is not defined. And it makes sense, because name will be more like what you see for the select element. So if there's a name to an option, it more names that HTML element, which isn't what we really want. Instead, the true value that I should have entered is text. And I found that again by re-referencing a source that describes the element and its properties. So I save the file, now refresh, 
and there you can see that I really am seeing the value that's between those option tags. You might wonder to yourself why when I was creating this video I didn't edit or go back and change so that you saw the exact precise information here in terms of the right value. That's for a reason. It's because it, no matter how long you work with this technology you're going to find a situation where you're remembering correctly or what you read didn't make as much sense as you originally thought it did at first and it just shows that it always pays to to take a break to stop to go back to your sources to make sure your information is correct in the first place and to simply try again sometimes it even helps to step away and come back but long story short what we've shown here is how to configure a select item or select element so that it can call a JavaScript when someone chooses a different value and then we also showed how to pass a reference to that elements form to a JavaScript so that we could then reference the select item by referencing that form and through the name of the select item then we showed how to choose the selected index of the currently selected item and that was important because then to get the actual text value of that object or that option we needed that selected index so we could properly find it in the long list of options so I hope this video was helpful to you in understanding how to handle an event handler and also in terms of how to work with a select list Thank you very much.